Victory Monday on repeat. Yeah? Again. Ken's bored we're already. We're here. <laughs> are you, Ken, you were saying a while ago that you yeah. are, are, that it's getting to be mundane Monday with how much the Lions are winning right now. Yeah, there's just like, there's something about how they're winning that is a little boring. No. <laughs> no. I don't want to complain about no. this. This sounds ridiculous. The Super Bowl run. I don't want to uh, complain about it. I don't. I'm just uh, saying that it's kind of like for me at this point, it's like, wake me up for the playoffs. Oh, they're so oh good. God. I know. Like, oh, no. It's crazy. I just, that's how I feel right now. They, and there we go. Look, that's the hot take machine, not you. Come on. Uh, welcome to Detroit Sports me. Plus. We are back along with Derek, Ben, and Ken. I'm Hobie. And guys, what a performance. 52 to 6. That's 52 points for the Lions in back to back home games. What was the most impressive part to you about what they were able to accomplish against the Jaguars yesterday? Because it was, if it wasn't this, it was that. And if it wasn't that, it was this. It was just incredible. I felt like I was watching like Michigan play a directional school in September. That's what was so impressive. Like NFL games yeah, aren't it was supposed like to look like week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like uh, you know the second week in November for the SEC when it was, you know it was Alabama, Alabama plays Mercer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like NFL teams, even in even when you see big spreads like this one, 14 and a half, usually the game is like you know a couple touchdown game going into the fourth this game was over by halftime completely over nobody had any questions the only debate about this entire second half was at what point should the Lions take their starters out of the game <laughs> right. because they could have done it at halftime and they would have been just fine but yeah so just the way that the Lions are just demeaning these bad teams and just destroying them it's really impressive I love how the Lions are getting so good that Hendon Hooker has become the new Darko. <laughs> like at the end of Everybody's just cheering for him to come in. Um, no, I mean, what wasn't impressive yesterday? I don't even know where to start. I mean, seven for seven on drives, uh, seven touchdowns. I mean, their offense is just a machine, and it really has been ever since Dan Campbell's come in and taken over. And uh, they are just a, mach a machine. They're a train that you just cannot stop. And it really does feel like we are the Alabama of the NFL right now, and it's so awesome. You know, yesterday was unlike Ken, I was very entertained yesterday. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yesterday seemed like in past years when a game like that would come on, you're kind of like, okay, third quarter, I'm going to go do some yard work and stuff like that. But knowing how special this season is, I feel like even in a game like yesterday, I'm glued to every single play because I know what I'm witnessing. I know what I'm watching this year, and I know I've waited 35 plus years to get to this point. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to miss a play. And uh, the whole thing was just, it's just so impressive on how they just, they're so crisp in everything that they do. Even watching some of the other games yesterday, you, you see really bad football around, mm -hmm. and we were so used to that. And now we're only watching good football, and it's such a flip to the the entire way I've spent my entire NFL watching career, um, you know, and it's just so different now. So I don't want to take anything for granted. So Ken, what was the least boring part of the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on. I, I'm getting a bad rap. I'm being misinterpreted. I'm, st I'm still enjoying the run, okay? I didn't say that. I just meant that, like, when we come in here on a Monday, there isn't, like, this big hanging thing that we need to address. Uh -uh. And so that makes it a little... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, so that Campbell call, like, nothing's happened. Yeah. Nope. Like, nothing nothing has happened for us are to be really discussed. Are you afraid we're yeah. going to start making some cuts around here? <laughs> <laughs> He's right. It's not great for content. Like, yeah, the, yeah, Lions, that's what I'm the Lions, like, the, the, you know, the opening kickoff happens, the Lions destroy someone, and then the game ends. And then we're like, oh, okay, how many weeks in a row? Is, oh, eight weeks in a row. That's, just that, like, that's my point. Yeah, right. it's not like, it, I'm not not enjoying it. Of course, I'm loving every moment of it. But it's also like, well, yeah, of course they did that. Yeah. They're, they're really it's good. become expected <laughs> yeah it's become expected yeah. and whenever you have an eight game winning streak the first time they do this by the way in what 90 years yeah it's absolutely it, that, that's that's, in, that's insane that's yeah. insane i remember that season it was wild did you do, do you now <laughs> do you now did you go back in time did you get a delorean to go back for that one? yeah 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 the yeah, only yeah. bad thing about it was that the lions gave the jags a first-hand look at just how good ben johnson can be right because like yeah. there were reports before the game that like D that Doug Peterson was basically coaching for his life and the Lions just kept rubbing his face in it. So it was like, uh. what a situation, by the way, go beat the hottest team in football. Yeah. If you want to, if, you, yeah. if you want to continue that, that's not great. What was great though, is everything that the Lions put on the field yesterday from offense to defense, to special teams, even Jake Bates making a field goal in that one, your boy Bates, delicious. That is your guy. Is guy. Uh, let's, let's start with the offense though. Jared Goff after the game against Houston, where he throws five interceptions, he comes back, and yes, the run game established everything, but Goff had 
probably st at least statistically his best game in a Lions uniform. What looked different to you guys from what happened in Houston where he just really couldn't get anything going his way to where everything was going his way against the Jags? Yeah, it makes it makes the Houston game look like the outlier, which is I don't think any of us were worried about the offense or Jared Goff after that Houston game because it was so bad that you knew it was just like a fluke. But it was still good to see him get back on, on track. I mean, it was just everything was just on time. Ben used the word crisp. I don't think there's any better way to describe it. I mean, he was hitting receivers perfectly in stride. How many times did we see J-Mo or uh, Gibbs catch a ball and they're just taking off and they're going 50 yards? And wide open space too. Yeah, I mean, wide he, open. it's not like he had to fit a bunch of balls into tight windows, but he did have to, to the placement still allowed the Lions to capitalize and put up over 600 yards. There's no like guarantee more than Jared Goff on a bounce back. After he throws an interception, you know that next drive, he's going for a touchdown. After a bad game, which really the Houston game wasn't as bad as everyone thought it was. Uh, I know he threw five interceptions, but a couple of those A lot picks, of tip balls. Yeah, yeah. There was a, it was really some two of those interceptions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I knew that, I mean, it's not like I was worried about the Jags in the first place, but I knew coming back into this game, he was going <laughs> to bounce back because that's what Jared Goff does. He, he has a very short memory, and if you need a bounce back and a guy you know that's just going to shake it off, it's, it's Jared Goff. And you know that you know the team wanted to get him back on track too. Mm -hmm. So everyone seemed to be open <laughs> yeah. at all times. So credit to the Jags defense; they did a fantastic job letting our receivers get open. <laughs> it, what it, was that? Six hundred and forty-five yards it, yeah. it, it, total. It was six sixty-five. Yeah, six sixty-five. Franchise record for an offense. This is a Jags defense, by the way, that had three picks on Sam Darnold the week before. So we're granted they only have five all season long, but still. They showed flashes in the game that they played before this, so it wasn't like, oh, Jared Goff is going to go light them up by uh, guaranteed. They still had to go out and, and, and prove it. Yeah, I mean, the Vikings are 8-2, and two, right? They're yeah. one of the teams that are right behind the Lions, and they just played the Jaguars tight. So the fact that the Lions just slaughtered them, I mean, that that's obviously gives you a pretty good feeling. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Also, <laughs> Sam Darnold. Probably fraudulent. I mean, <laughs> right I mean on. yeah, he's definitely coming back to earth a <laughs> yeah, little bit. Thank you. Right. But Just Minnesota's sure still a good team. Yeah. I, I still think that this division comes down to the last week of the year. I still do. So you think the Vikings yeah. are going to be within a game? That's I what you're I saying. Th I think they'll be within a game <laughs> by the end of the year. All right. We shall see. Yeah. That's why they play it. Speaking of, though, let's look at this defense because everybody looks at the numbers and the yards and the, and the points that the Lions were able to put up yesterday. But that defense kept the Jags out of the end zone six points all game. They also kept up their streak 14 consecutive games with a turnover force. Whenever Kirby Joseph grabbed his seventh, which also leads the NFL. By the way, the Lions are now tied for the best record in the NFL. But but that defense. Keep going, Obi. Keep you going. Keep going. Just yeah. keep, keep going. Is this getting you excited again? Yes. You know keep what? Going. Is this I'm getting you reengaged? Are we in. reeling yeah, you back? I'm back in. in. I'm back in. But Say that defense. What, what what jumped out about that defense? Even Zadarius Smith got a sack in his first game as a Lion. I mean, all right, Zadarius Smith showing up in the Rasheed Wallace jersey. That right there was a big win for me. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, I love this guy already. He's Talk just, about knowing your audience. Man. I know, right? <laughs> I love it. I know. That's so good. It was an automatic, like, fan favorite yeah. moment, right? <laughs> like, yeah. um, I think it's the safeties. I mean, Kirby Joseph is inevitable. Seven picks in ten games. That's ridiculous. And he's not even the best safety on his own team because Brian Branch is the best Arguably, arguably the best player on the Lions roster right now with Aiden Hutchinson out. I mean, every single play he makes, you don't even need to see the number on his jersey. You're like, oh, well, that was Brian Branch because he's the only guy capable that of hit, making that play. That hit, by the way. Oh, my God. Oh, I, think unbelievable. We, I think we all felt it in <laughs> yeah. some way, shape, or form. Ooh. So, yeah, <laughs> those safeties are just unbelievable. And I think the whole defense just starts there. Again, in the middle, though, Jack Campbell, another, another well. solid, solid game. And Rodrigo him. was really good, Rodrigo, too. Rodrigo, I hate losing Alex Anzalone, though. I, I feel like that's a, that's a big energy loss. I think the Lions have, you know, they've got enough depth to, uh, you know, I don't think you're going to see this big drop off in our linebacker play. But I think, you know, for the first time, the Lions have so much talent on their team that when they bring in a backup, that backup only has to do one job. They don't have to cover an entire field mm -hmm. or whoever they were replacing. And I, this is the first time for the Lions, for me, the depth, they just have enough guys to just plug in there and say, just do your job and we're going to be fine. And I think the Lions are set up that way to, they'll be fine without Anzalone. I think they play really well together. And that's, you know, early on in the season, there was some moments where it was like, it felt like, you know, some of the new guys were out on an island or they, they were just kind of still, still getting acclimated to each other. And now it feels like they are one cohesive unit. And so when that happens and you bring in a new guy, you're not reinventing the wheel. You're just 
plugging and playing. Yeah. Like right away, and that fits right into the system. Neiman, that first play he was in, he was ben right. Neiman has been good. Ben Neiman has yeah. been solid. Yeah. He so has, has Malcolm Rodriguez. I mean, like all these guys that they've, you know, been moving in and out. They they play their role and they do their job. Trevor Nowoski, yeah. he's been really good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those guys are good. Yeah. Shout out, this. shout out, Aaron Glenn. He's been the best coordinator yeah. in the entire NFL so far this season. I mean, it's tough when Ben Johnson is playing with all these great. Like he's got so many weapons that he looks so good and it's so flashy. But honestly, Aaron Glenn, I think deserves even more credit. I mean, this guy finds a way to get the job done no matter who he is missing. And I know both of them were kind of floated out there as head coaching candidates last year, got interviews. I think right now it is it is close to being a, a, as it ever was that these two guys will be a head coach. They would have to make the decision not to leave. Like that right. yeah, at that point. That's it. You'd I mean, to, but, yeah. but what Aaron Glenn has done this year, I think his name is rising up I agree, among yeah. among head we win the Super Bowl, they're boards gone. right now. They're gone. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Speaking of that. Did you see the new favorites for the Super Bowl after week 11? Is it the Bengals? It is not. <laughs> do tell. Do it tell. is not. Stop, by the way. Stop, by the way. Don't, don't, don't do that to Joe Burrow. All right. I, don't do that to Joe Burrow. I'm sorry, but Joe Burrow stinks. All right. Oh, I'm, whoa, I'm just going to say it. Whoa, There's my hot take what? of the day. I watched whoa. him yesterday. The guy who leads the whoa. NFL in passing yards I'm, and passing touchdowns give me Jared and is Goff carrying the offense. <laughs> and day. if it wasn't for his defense giving up touchdown after he touchdown stinks. after touchdown. <laughs> he just... I just don't like his his pocket awareness. It was awful yesterday. And he has no pocket. <laughs> I'm not with that. He has the no offensive pocket. line. Definitely doesn't he has no pocket. He has no offensive line. Maybe I, that's no. The problem. Maybe yeah. that's maybe it. That's and maybe that's yeah. But oh, he, yeah. I've been a fan of Joe Burrow's ever since he led the second best college season of the playoff era at LSU. <laughs> he was awesome I mean, in LSU. He so. was awesome. <laughs> Hope he just catches the strays. <laughs> Man, we I did not Hobie. think we were going to send Hobie away with Joe Burrow is bad. Yeah, it's over. It was, no, no, no. It wasn't right, not only right Joe Burrow is bad. It. it was then you go after the college team that had how, – how many first-round draft picks did that team have? Oh, I forgot. They won the national championship. They had a Heisman-winning quarterback. Oh, they had – I think it was five or six first-round picks. Yeah. Is there, is there another team that's done that? I don't know. A lot of teams that don't win national is championships have draft that, picks. That, has just, is it possible he's just regressed because the offensive line is so bad? I mean, because he doesn't look like Super he Bowl. He had 330 Joe something yards of offense well, or I passing mean, yards yesterday. Yeah, but half of those just go five yards to Joe to uh, Jamar Chase, and he's just doing the rest. Yeah. Where did Jamar Chase go? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He was on that team, too, and he was drafted the next year. So that's another first we round. We are day. down the rabbit hole, fellas. <laughs> we are. We are. Let's talk about the Lions team. Come on. Why are we picking on me? I don't Why know. are we it's picking on like me? Was there. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think any of us disagree with the Lions being the Super Bowl favorites uh -huh. after this weekend. But it makes it, sense. It felt like they were kind of, the odds makers were kind of waiting for the Chiefs to officially slip up. But even if they had won that game, I still would have came away from this weekend feeling like the Lions were the best team. I mean, from an eight game winning streak they've got some wins over good teams but just what they're doing to the bad teams it's just crazy time yeah. out time out yeah a couple weeks ago i asked you guys i was like are the lions the best team in the nfl i was the only person sitting here that said yes everybody else said the chiefs what changed your mind in three weeks what changed your mind that you swap the, the lions and the chiefs well the chiefs have been you know squeaking by yeah uh and the lions have been absolutely dominating and in the game that they didn't uh, dominate. They made Boom. an epic comeback mm -hmm. on the road in a in a you know hostile environment in prime time. I mean, like all of that combined just shows you that the Lions are the Lions are kind of uh, just entering another another level, and the Chiefs mm -hmm. are the Chiefs are just getting by. Some somehow they're just getting by. And t yesterday it didn't work. They they finally got caught yesterday. But the championship pedigree finally yeah. let them down. Totally. I must have been gone that week because I there's no way I would have said the Lions <laughs> you might are not, not, been not the best you team. You might not have been. I don't. I, the Lions I could recall. be 0 and 11. <laughs> yeah. like Lions. When they were yeah. 0 and 11, I was yeah. still saying they were the best team. They're they just still had to get not it together. 30 second. I promise you. <laughs> they're still not 30 second. Yeah, for me it was the sheer dominance that changed my mind. We've seen two blowouts since we had that discussion over the Titans mm -hmm. and now over the Jags and just the way the Lions looked. Uh, it, it, that changed my mind as well as Ken mentioned it, the Texans game to be able to basically take half of the game off <laughs> and then come back and be like, oh, that's right. We are who we are. We, we are the Lions, you know, and then they come back on the road in primetime and still find a way to win that game. It's just like you, you just see this team and there's just no obvious flaws. I mean, you lose Aiden Hutchinson, you lose Anzalone and there's just it's like the next guy comes in and there's no drop off. What's more impressive, though, blowing a team out or doing what they did in Houston? Or doing what they did against the Vikings, for that matter, where they still had to come back and win that game. 
to me, what's more impressive is blowing out the bad teams. But what what makes what gives me more hope for the playoffs is being able to not play your best game and still win. Mm-hmm. But the blowouts to me are what really show this team's ceiling because those are still professional teams. You know, this isn't Alabama versus Mercer. This is you know two professional you are getting football paid teams to play the game. Exactly. If you want to stop it, stop it. And the different the difference between the best team in the NFL and the worst team in the NFL is nowhere near the gap from those college teams. So to be able to just continually crush these terrible teams like the Cowboys and the Titans and the Jags, to, th- that's that's more impressive. Because how many times have we seen the trap game, you know, get, get this team yeah. and it's like they don't even fall for that trap this time. It, they're just plowing right through these trap these trap games mm-hmm. and it doesn't even affect them and that's nice security. Trap games aren't real anymore, man. <laughs> I swear. I, I, but it, it goes back. We've had this conversation a few times this year. There is still the Lions fan base mentality is still worried about little things like this once oh, in a while. Oh, I see other teams get, get caught with the trap games. Well, I know, but, the, but they, <laughs> yeah. they, they're just like they're past that at this point. Right. They're just they're, – they're better than the trap game. <laughs> yeah. you know? They just are. Like I even had friends yesterday that were like, I don't know, I think Jags are going to keep it close. Like – no, they're not. <laughs> you I, know, like they're just not. Jones. But I mean, like there, there still is that feeling that, like, oh, I don't know, maybe something bad is going to happen. It's even if it's a one percent, you know, thing, like in the back of your head, it's still there. And I think we we should feel safe. <laughs> we should feel confident <laughs> that that sort of thing is not yeah, going to happen. I expect right a, now. I expect a blowout in Indianapolis. This, I'm this shocked weekend. by oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking yeah, of, we will preview that game coming up on DSP. By the way, have you had the, the shirts printed yet? Winning is boring. <laughs> that no. might be it. That may, well, but they'll be available by the end of the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Burrow is bad. Will be the will be the alternative. Great. That's uh, our that's our hottest much seller. Much more to come. Much more to come on DSP when we return after the break. Welcome back to Detroit Sports Plus alongside Derek, Ben, and Ken. I'm Hobie. And now the Lions go for the complete sweep of the AFC South this weekend. Their final opponent from the division, the Colts, coming up on Sunday. They get Anthony Richardson back as their starting quarterback, and he had a pretty good game yesterday against the Jets. Maybe his best game as a Colt. Is there any hesitation I already see the look on your face. You have zero <laughs> whatsoever. You are all gas right now with the Lions. Any hesitation on the part of uh, the Colts might might give them game? Like you said, your friends were telling you yeah. against against the Jags going into that one. No, no? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not Fine, I'll say it. I mean, yeah, I, I think I think the Colts are capable. Fine, I'll say it. <laughs> the Colts are capable of beating the Lions at home. Like, no, like, not. like if the Lions play a uh, uh, Houston Texans esque half. It's no guarantee that they're going to be able to just come back and beat a team, you mm-hmm. know, every single week. So, yeah, I mean, I think that, like I said, these are professional football teams. I think most of the teams, sort of like the Bears on their remaining schedule, are teams that the Lions need to play well to beat. So, I think that the Anthony Richardson is kind of a unique challenge in in the dual threat uh, that he poses. So, yeah, the Lions the Lions are going to have to play well to win this game. But I obviously expect them to win. They're heavily favored once again. But is it unthinkable that they could drop this game? Now? I mean, could the Colts cover? That's what we should be talking <laughs> about. Are we back to that? Are we back? <laughs> this is where we were two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Are we back to that? Uh, I, no, I just I'm not I'm not worried about it. I mean, the Colts are the Colts are not the Jags. They're definitely not. That they're not that tier of bad. I mean, they're still right. in the mix they're of like things the Bears. In, the, in general. Uh, and I don't expect it to be a 52 to six game by any means. No, uh, but I'm not. I'm not worried about the Lions losing the game now. Any hesitation because I, it, it's been it's been a storyline. And granted, this team is shattering every single storyline that's been against it this season. But historically, running quarterbacks have had some success against this defense in the past. Now they'll be without Alex Anzalone going into this game. Any hesitation on that front that Anthony Richardson could have a solid game? Justin Fields did it last year. I've watched Anthony Richardson because I've been really excited to see what he was going to look like in the NFL ever since last year. And every time I've watched him, I've been underwhelmed. He just, he can't throw very well. All his yards come on like one bomb per mm-hmm. game. Uh, he well, does the guys to, like wide open. Yeah, in the middle you know, of the field. He, yeah. he doesn't know how to slide. For some reason, he just won't slide. So I'd be surprised if he even lasts this whole game and they march Joe Flacco back out there. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm not worried about the cults at all. What are you watching? Game tape? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You're just in your in your like man cave, like circling. Like, Listen, I put the work schemes. in for you guys. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, well let, I don't let, even like football. Right? <laughs> so let, let's talk this out right now. They have the Colts, Bears, Packers, Bills, Bears again, 49ers, Vikings. Those are the the games remaining. What do, what do you think their record could be? Do you think this team could run the table? Yeah, 16 and one. But I will realistically say 15 and two. Okay. I think they'll lose one, maybe two. I I do. I think they'll lose one or two. Yeah. I think I think they're gonna I think they're gonna finish 14 and three. Um, I think there's an obvious big four games there, right? I mean, you've got the Bills, the 49ers, and then the two divisional games. Um, and if you split those two and two, and you win the other three, you're probably gonna get the number one seed. Um, depending on what the Eagles do, so yeah, I mean I, the Lions are probably are going to be favored in all of those, if yeah. not all, but San, but San Francisco. So individually, you think even with how San Francisco is playing right now, I think granted it, it is on the West Coast, but I think it'll be like Lions minus one and a half or something. Like yeah, that, that yeah. it depends. It depends on what both teams do between now and that yeah. game. I think it depends more on what the 49ers do between mm -hmm. now and them because if the 49ers get right they're going to be favored at home like th that's just the way that it works in the nfl with top teams so but uh, like i said i mean individually i would pick the lions to win each one i'm still games. thinking san francisco comes out on top of that division i think so too yeah, yeah. i think when when the dust settles and it's all said and done i think it's san they'll francisco. find a way even without yeah playing without some key players yeah matthew stafford might have something to say about that Kyler he looked good yesterday he looked good yesterday. Doing Stafford things. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, lo looking at what's to come, I, I think the, the, the all of those games being at home is huge. Yeah. The Lions. So, so many of those big games, quote unquote. Three out of the four. Yeah. yeah. The only place I have to go to is San Francisco. And if, if there's one thing that the Lions, <laughs> if, the, if there's one thing that the Lions want to do, it's get revenge for games that happened last year. We saw it in Dallas. So now going back to San Francisco where the, the horror happened, right? Uh -huh. Like they're going to be so juiced to I'm go a, back. I'm excited for that game. Exercise yeah. the demons in that. Exactly. Like a re revenge game for sure. Yeah, oh. Ben's going to pick the, the final score to be like 43 to 10 or something. Yeah. <laughs> score 49. That'll be very poetic. Yeah. 49. I think they're already getting revenge. Have you seen those that Little Caesars commercial where Amon Ross says, Kittle can't have it? Yeah. Thing? Except for you, Kittle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except for you, Kittle. I think that's pretty good. Uh, December 30th should be a great one. Still come on DSP. We'll be chatting about the Pistons. One win Detroit away from being 500 basketball. right now. We've got that coming up after the break. Welcome back to Detroit Sports Plus. We've been talking so much about the Lions, but you cannot ignore what Detroit <laughs> basketball is doing Woo! right now. They're demanding our attention, Hobie. They are. They are. I mean, th this team is what? Seven, seven and, eight and eight right now? Yep. Favored tonight, too. Against the Bulls? Favored yep. in back-to-back -back games. I can't remember the last time. Oh, that my God. Can we be That's... 500? <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. I looked it up. The last time that they were 500 at this point in November was 2018. We looked it up before we came on to the show. Wow. wow. Do you think that this is a completely different team, though? Because it is one thing to go, well, last year it was 14 wins, but right now they are halfway to that total at the halfway point of November. It's amazing what good leadership can do huh. in, a, in, a, in a small window. They get rid of Troy Weaver. They get rid of Monty Williams. They bring in J.B. Bickerstaff and Trajan Langdon, and – they have a completely different philosophy, and you can see it on the court immediately. Trajan Langdon brings in vets who are not just bench guys. They're starters. They're leaders in the locker room, they're, and they're shooters, <laughs> by the way. We like shooting. And J.B. Bickerstaff is the man for the job. He looks like it. They're winning with defense. That's how you know coaching is working with a young team in the NBA. They're sixth in defensive uh, efficiency. They're fourth in rebounding. They are holding teams to low scoring their offense is a work in progress they're turning the ball over a lot they're still a young team but their defense is holding them in those games their crunch time performance is mm. still to be desired yeah. uh, but Cade Cunningham has put this team on his back he's four triple doubles this year I mean that's like LeBron James stuff We're 15 games <laughs> yeah. into the season by yeah. the way yeah. yeah he's already up to four so they are a completely different team the young guys have this new instilled confidence. They're all playing better. All of the young guys have improved from last year. And then you bring in the, the influence of the veterans and the, and the improved shooting. They're, they're a team that 
can win games. They, they can actually win games. Because if you go back and you look at, like you mentioned crunch time, you look back at the game that they played against the Heat, you look back at the game that they played against the Bucs. I'm talking about the Heat one a couple weeks ago. Against the Bucs, that was just utter collapse yeah. in that one. There's so many times this season where they could be three, four games above 500 right now. Yeah. It's incredible. And I remember in 04, that was my squad. That was my favorite championship team I had ever watched. And after they won it, <clears throat> beating the Lakers, I remember I told everybody, I was like, I don't care what the Pistons do for the next 20 years. I'm so sad. Oh, it's it Ben's you. fault. It's been 20 years. All right. It's now 2024. The ben curse? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 ben I, I, traded listen, Chauncey. I gave him a big window, and I was like, you guys can take off the next 20 years. All right. Well, wow. 20 years is up. So now it, it, it's time. And I love seeing, like, we're never going to see <clears throat> that type of team be built again. But uh, there's a new era, and it's awesome to see Cade become the potential superstar that we thought he could be when we took him number one overall. So I, I'm really looking forward to this year. One minute left. What you got? Ken, Ken wrote a column about this topic on clickondetroit.com. I recommend you go read it. But it, there were a few key points that stood out. Like, Basketball is a relatively simple game, and you have to have shooting. And this is the first time during this drought that the Pistons have gone out in free agency and addressed the lack of shooting. And you can see it's not just shooting better from three. It's opening up the inside for Cade. It's opening up the inside for Jaden Ivey, who you used a top five pick on and then gave him no help. So you're starting to see these players flourish, and you finally got a closer. It doesn't – It doesn't. You, even if the Pistons have a closing problem, at least they have a closer because not yeah. having someone who is capable of doing that is even worse because then it can't be fixed. The Pistons are actually competitive. Like you said, even in losses for the first time yeah. in 15 years, it seems like they're a team that's actually worth tuning in for. I actually check my app every day to see if the Pistons are playing. <laughs> I would also say what? in, the, in those cr the crunch time issue, think about it. They haven't had that much experience in crunch time games in years. That young core has not played close competitive games. They just haven't. So they're learning on the fly right now and they're learning on the floor with those veterans, some of, some of which have won championships, have made deep playoff runs. They are learning right now. You're like seeing it in real time. Yep. All those close, those close losses mm -hmm. that you just said, they, a couple, the, uh, the last two or three games have been close. They, they closed out those games. They're learning it right on the fly. As Winning so much is that boring too. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> he loved the Mike Tyson fight, though. He thought it was the greatest thing he ever saw. He said it was action I sad that I you wasted my time on that because apparently what? I was the only person who watched it at this table. Uh, that's it for us on DSP. We'll catch y'all next time. You had it up.